Welcome back to Pure Math 030. This is a lesson on combined transformations, but this the focus will be on questions involving them. So test type questions and a few exercises to get comfortable with the effect on ordered pairs and on equations when you do have more than one transformation. And a little bit of work on replacement values as well. So some tricky stuff. So start off with tracking points. That's just what I call this type of question where you're given an, a function and you're given an ordered pair that lies on that function and you have to follow it under certain transformations. Now to do these ones properly you need to be aware of an order of operations. And unless they tell you otherwise, if you're just given a function, the safest way to go through those transformations is to do it alphabetically. That is, you do the reflections, then you do the stretches, and then you do the translations. Now it's true that you can actually do the stretches before the reflections or at the same time, and there's also other things you can do that are not like this if you're really on top of it. But this is a very safe way to do it, and until you get comfortable I would recommend it. So let's take a look at a question involving the tracking of points. So we're told that the point 1 comma 1 lies on the graph of y equal f at x and we want to find the corresponding point on y is equal to negative 2 f at x plus 1. Now we don't know what type of function it is, only that the point 1 comma 1 lay on the original untransformed curve. So you have to first off identify the nature of the um, transformations on this. And you can see that because we have a negative 2 or negative in front of the function, that we have a reflection in the x-axis. Now Keep in mind that what that really meant is that y was replaced with negative y, so we're affecting the y. We also had a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 about the x-axis, that would be the 2 in front. And then we had a horizontal translation of one unit to the left, and that's it. So I, in that order, reflections, stretches, translations, I will find this point 1 comma 1, where it ends up. So if it's been reflected in the x-axis, it means the y-coordinate has been changed, multiplied by negative 1. So 1 comma 1 would transform to 1 comma negative 1. Nothing happens to the x. It's important to remember who gets affected by what stretch or which transformation. And now we go to the vertical stretch by 2. The vertical stretch only affects the y-coordinate. So we multiply it by 2. So 2 comma, ne two comma negative 2. And then we deal with the horizontal translation of one unit left. So it if, does not affect the y-coordinate, only the x. So we go to the left one, that is we subtract 1 from the x-coordinate and it takes us to 0, comma, negative 2. So the point 1, comma, 1 transforms to 0, comma, negative 2 on this one. Let's take a look at another one. This one's more complicated same point 1 comma 1, but here we have y over 3 plus 1 is equal to f at negative 1 quarter x plus 2. We really need to clean this one up first. So mathematically, I'll do two things. I'll take the 1 to the other side, subtract it away, and then I'll also factor out that negative 1 quarter from the x 1 quarter x plus 2. So we divide both terms by negative 1 quarter, and 2 divided by negative 1 quarter becomes negative 8. So be really careful with that manipulation. Also recognize now that we should isolate the y. So to get rid of that 3 as the denominator, we multiply everybody by 3. So that puts the 3 in front of the, the function itself, but also the minus 1, the straggler minus 1, needs to get multiplied by 3. So this is what we get in its simplest form. So quite a bit of work. And 
now that we have that, we have to identify the transformations and walk our way through them in that alphabetic way. So I'll write it again. We have a reflection in the y-axis. That negative one quarter, so the x had been replaced with negative x, and that gives us that reflection. We have a vertical stretch by a factor of 3 about the x-axis, and that is due to the 3 times the f at x. We have a horizontal stretch by a factor of 4. That's because x had been replaced with 1 quarter x. We had that 1 quarter in front of it. We have a horizontal translation of 8 units to the right, x minus 8. And finally, we have a vertical translation of three units down. So one, two, three, four, five transformations. We'll walk our way through reflections, then stretches, then translations. Even though you could, if you were, you could do it differently if you were really confident with these. So we take that point one comma one, and then when we reflect it in the y-axis, important to remember because you have replaced x with negative one, only the x-coordinate is affected. So therefore, negative 1, comma 1. A vertical stretch by a factor of 3 only affects the y-coordinate. So that point will now transform to negative 1, comma 3. So now we do the horizontal stretch by 4, but only the x-coordinate gets multiplied by that. And that should be a negative 4, comma 3. I'll fix that right away. And then when we take it to 8 units to the right, only the x-coordinate gets affected, so it becomes 4, 3. You add 8 on to the x, but notice the y is unchanged. Finally, the vertical translation of 3 units down would be 4, 0. So 3 gets subtracted from the x from the y-coordinate tricky question. Let's take a look at some other problems. These ones are where you're kind of doing it backwards. You, instead of being given an equation and you want to identify what happened, you need to build your own equation. So we want to find the equation that defines a function, any old function y equal f at x, that's been reflected in the y-axis stretched horizontally by a factor of 4 about the y-axis and then translated up 5 units. And because it didn't tell you any specific order of operations, we'll go for the normal alphabetic RST, which is always the way it can work, a safe way to do it, unless told otherwise. So, I'm going right to the answer here. y is equal to f at negative 1 quarter x plus 5. Now we really didn't need that little bracket around the x, but everything here lines up. A reflection in the y-axis means that x gets replaced with negative x. The horizontal stretch factor by 4 means that we have to have the reciprocal of that, so x actually got replaced by negative 1 quarter x. The translation of 5 units up meant that we add 5 onto the graph. Or if you like, you replaced y with y minus 5. Here's another one. Find an equation for a function, y equal f of x. It's been reflected in the x-axis, okay. Stretched horizontally by a factor of 5 over 6, about the y-axis. Stretched vertically by a factor of 3 over 7, about the x-axis. And here, too, I want to write all the replacements for x and y. And this you've got to be careful with, but I'm, I've stated it in some of the previous questions. Here it's actually going to be written out. If you take a look at the reflection first, the reflection in the x-axis, and also the vertical stretch, I'll do them together. We've stretched it vertically by a factor of 3 over 7. Now you've got to be careful because at the replacement level, it means that y has been replaced 
with negative 7 over 3 what? Now the negative you probably can see well because that's the reflection. The 7 over 3 um, where at the substitution level, the replacement level, it's the reciprocal and you'll see that when you isolate y of course it, it, it inverts. So stick with that one for a second and then let's see compare our, check our answer out. The horizontal stretch now because it's been stretched horizontally by a factor of 5 over 6, it means that it's been replaced with the reciprocal, 6 over 5. So what this is telling us is that at the replacement substitution level, everybody is backwards. So, if we did substitute those values in, we'd get negative 7 over 3y is equal to f at 6 over 5x. Excuse the bad writing on that. I'll fix that one too. And most of you would be more comfortable with this. y is equal to negative 7 over 3f at 6 over 5x. Not y, but x. Because you would isolate the y. You notice when you have the y isolated that the y looks honest. But at the replacement level, it doesn't work that way. Let's do one more. Now we want to get the equation of the image of y is equal to the square root of x plus 4 after it has been reflected in the x and y axes and stretched horizontally by a factor of 2 over 3 about the y axis. So in this case you're actually given a function not just y equal f at x but a specific square root function that is starting with a translation of 4 to the left and it helps to think about replacements with these. So we have a reflect two reflections, x and y axes. So if you do want to reflect this in the x axis, you need to be aware that the substitution is y being replaced with negative y. So don't think, just re replace. And then we have a horizontal stretch and then a reflection in the y. And you can do those together because they're both affecting the y with just, excuse me, the x with just one substitution. So you reflect in the y-axis, you replace x with negative x. You could show that separately, but you don't have to. And then the horizontal stretch by a factor of two-thirds means that you're putting in the reciprocal, 3 over 2. So x, in fact, is being replaced with negative 3 over 2x. Now we So if we take a look at the next, after we do these, we get the equation, we replace y with negative y, get this, so negative y is equal to square root, and then when the x gets replaced with negative 3 over 2x, just do the straight replacement, don't think, just replace. And while this is technically correct, usually you'll isolate the y, and it's also a nice touch to isolate the x. So we could get write it as this, y is equal divide by negative 1, and then within the square root, factor out that negative 3 over 2, and you'll get x minus 8 over 3. Now be very careful, because you're going 4 divided by negative 3 over 2, which is 4 times negative 2 thirds. And then you've got it. So thank you for your time.